My name is Sandra Dorsey. I have three girls and 11 grandchildren. I am an interpreter care coordinator and I'm a nutritionist as well. I'm Gwen Shelton, mother of two boys, grandmother of 10 grandchildren. My name is Regina King and I am from Baltimore. I'm a foster mother, have been for 10 years. I really want to share this with other people. Really, really want to share. My 14 year old grandson is now living with me after experiencing the tragedy of his 10 month old sister dying. This baby to die in the bed with their siblings was very traumatic. It was traumatic to everyone. It was traumatic to the siblings who woke up and the baby was not responsive. Now I know that, oh, you know what, that baby needs to have its own crib. And there are even resources that I've learned uh, just very recently, whereas if you don't have a crib, that they can get you a crib if you cannot afford one. Safe sleep has really changed since when I had my baby, um, because now it's, the baby has to be on the back where I, when I had my son, you could put him, lie him on his stomach. When you sleep on your stomach, your windpipe is down, and that's where gravity flows. So if my baby were to spit up while they were sleeping on their stomach, it's a sure path down through the windpipe or the trachea into their lungs, and I knew I didn't want that to happen. We want to keep the baby safe, so the bumper pads are out, the tough toys are out uh, when the baby is sleeping. We do not put those in the crib. If we want the baby, when the baby's old enough to hold those things, we can play with the baby, you know, later on the floor or where we have playtime for the baby. The baby's always in the crib. No baby's in the bed. They're tiny, you could roll over or you put the sheets on top of the child or you could fall asleep, you know, and when accident can happen. Don't ever put the baby on a sofa. Don't ever put the baby on the bed, no matter how um, you busy you are, you have to. to. To avoid that, just take a second, put the baby in, in the crib, make sure that he's, the baby's fine, he or she is fine, and then take care of whatever you have to take care of. That's a precious little life, and they depend on us, so we have to make choices for them, and we have to care for them and take care of them. And it's kind of like a shame that something as tra traumatic as yeah. that happened, whereas it really like opened my eyes to, oh, you know what? This safe sleep thing is really serious. It doesn't take a long time to keep your child safe if you do the right thing. I would have never thought as a grandmother my age and even those caregivers my age who are raising their uh, nieces, nephews, and grandchildren, they still don't know that, oh, you know what, it's okay. You put the baby on, it's back. But it's all been a learning process for me and my family. And this tragedy has kind of like really instilled in me a desire and a need to really educate people on safe sleep. My message as a caregiver to other caregivers would be that the baby should sleep alone, back, crib, no exceptions.